Hey everyone, so welcome to the seventh and final part of this tutorial series on the Facebook 360 Spatial Workstation and Reaper. In today's video, we are going to go over the final stages, so the exporting of our spatial mix as well as our headlocked mix, and then marrying that all together in a process called muxing with our video to create a product that we can share online on either Facebook or YouTube. So without further ado, let's switch over to screen sharing, disappear off into oblivion, and move back over to Reaper. So as I've been saying this whole time, we have two separate mixes that we've been working with. We have our 3D mix, our spatialized mix basically, and our headlocked mix, so our stereo mix. And for this to all be encoded properly and written into our video file properly, we need to make sure that both of those mixes have a separate file to bring into our encoder. So we're going to export our 3D mix separately and create another separate file for our standard stereo mix. So to do that in Reaper is relatively simple. The first thing that we need to do is select our location that we're going to be exporting. So using our locators that we went through in a previous video, we're going to highlight the area that we want to export. So to do that, we need to make sure that we're anywhere in the session that doesn't have any audio or MIDI information. So we should see this arrow with the dotted square around it. And we're just going to drag out the sections that we actually want to export. And to adjust the bounds of that, we just go to the edge so we get this little arrow and then drag it out, easy enough. So, <clears throat> as I said, we want two separate files, which in Reaper is really easy to do because Reaper's got some really, really powerful rendering functions. So the first thing I wanna do after I've set my locators is to select my control track and no other track. So make sure that this is the only track highlighted. You don't want this. You don't want that, you just want the control track for the time being. So with the locator set and the control track selected, we can come up to file and we can select render. So this is Reaper's render page. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's quite full compared to other bits of software. So I'm just gonna go through some of the main parts that we need for this process. So firstly, we need to make sure that we are only exporting the track that we have selected, which is really easy to do in our source section up here. It's already selected for me, but we can change this from being the default master mix down to stems selected tracks. And what this is gonna do is export a separate file for each track that we have selected. So in other contexts, if we were had a large session and we wanted to export our drum stems, bass stems, guitar stems, all as separate files, we can select all of them in our project and then select stems bracket selected track here and it will do it for us. So the next thing after that is we want to select where on the timeline that we actually want to export. So we've set our locators already in our session to do that. So we just need to make sure that our bounds up here is changed from the default entire project to time selection. Then we can move down to the output section and this is where we can name our file and select where we want to export it to. So I'm gonna name this Facebook 360 tutorial, uh, I don't know, Ambi. So this is our Ambisonic file that we're exporting and I'm just gonna browse here using browse for directory into my exports folder that I've created in my folder tree and select that as my export location. Then down here under options, this is where we can select our sample rate. So our session is in 44.1 and I'm going to leave it in 44.1 for now then we need to make sure that we are exporting third order ambisonics. So third order ambisonics has 16 channels and this is currently set to stereo. Now you'll notice if you click the arrow to drop this menu down, you only have a maximum of eight channels in this menu, but that's not all that Reaper can do. If you highlight stereo and you type in 16, we now have the option to export a 16 channel file Ooh, cancel accidentally started a render then ignore that so we've now got a 16 channel file ready to be exported okay so and down here we have our standard options for output format so we want to stick to wav we want to stick to 24-bit pcm blah 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 standard exporting settings so now that we have all of that set up because we want to export two separate files i'm not going to click this down here i'm not going to click render one file you can do if you want it as an option but instead of clicking that i'm going to click add to render queue and that's going to add this to a queue of files ready to be rendered so it's not started rendering yet but it's just waiting for us to click go at which point it will render everything that we put into the render queue 
So we set it up to export our 360 mix, our ambisonic mix. And the next thing we want to do is export our headlock mix. Now my headlock mix is currently non-existent, but I am gonna go through the process with you so that you know how to do it. So just as before, we're gonna leave our locators in the locations that they're currently in. And instead of selecting the control plugin, I'm gonna select the headlock master channel. So now that that's selected, I can come back up to file and render and I'm gonna leave this as stem selected tracks. I'm gonna leave this as time selection. I'm gonna leave the directory as it is, but I am gonna change this to B360 Tutorial HL so that I know that it's the headlock channel. And then the other important setting that we need to change is we need to change this 16 channels back to stereo. So make sure that that's stereo and that will export a stereo file for our stereo information going to keep all of this the same everything is the same just making sure that that's stereo and I've renamed it so I know what it is after that I'm going to click add to render queue and then if I come back up to file click open render queue underneath the render selection and you can see that I have two separate files ready and waiting to be rendered so I have my 16 channel polywav here ready to go and my stereo uh, headlocked mix here ready to go so I can confirm that they're ready. I know that they're exporting to the right place with the right name uh, and from the right project, blah, 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 blah. So I'm ready to go. I can click render all, and that's just gonna go through the process in non real time. So it's gonna be relatively quickly, but I am going to speed past this while it does it. And then we can move on to the encoding section. Okay, so now that those exports are finished, we can move on to the muxing process, which is just, as I said, the process of marrying all of our files together to create one package to share. So to do this, we need to use a new bit of software. So we've been using Reaper uh, and the Facebook plugins. Now you should have had another bit of software that was installed with the plugins called the FB360 encoder, and it looks like this. So this is a standalone application. This is not a plugin. This is a standalone application and should have been installed in the same location as the rest of your applications. So if you can't find it, then have a bit of a hunt around on Mac. It'll be in your applications folder. Not 100% sure what happens with things on Windows, so I'll leave that to you. But anyway, yes, this is where we can select our output formats, our audio stuff, uh, bring in our video files, and then finally output it in a format that Facebook and YouTube will understand. Now, what I mean by this is that this bit of software, this uh, application, what it's doing is it's basically taking all that information, bringing it all together so that we can use it, uh, and then adding a load of metadata to it so that Facebook understands what it's looking at. It understands that it's a 360 video, it knows where the front of the video is, so on and so forth. Uh, so we need to make sure that our output format is set to work with what we're delivering to. So in this drop-down menu, we have options. We have the Facebook 360 option, which is what we're going to use today, the 180 VR option, which is another form of immersive content, YouTube video and a load of other ones. So the ones that you really are probably going to be looking at the most are the 360 video for Facebook and for YouTube. Now you'll notice that YouTube specifies that it's first order AmbiX only. And this is interesting because Facebook uses third order Ambisonic. So it's got a higher resolution of spatial information, which in theory translates to a more immersive experience on the consumer end. Whereas YouTube, only uses first order ambisonic so we've got a difference of 16 channels or four channels now the annoying thing is that youtube has higher video quality so it really depends what your priority is in terms of delivery today we're going to stick to the facebook 360 video stuff just to keep things simple uh, but you can play around with it and put it wherever you want there's also a load of um, audio conversions and experimental stuff we can kind of ignore all of this and just stick to these top three and i'm going to stick to the top one moving down we have our spatial audio section so this is where we tell the encoder what audio file for our spatial information that we're going to use and what format it's in so i know that it's in b format third order ambx so i've set it to b format third order ambx 
But there are other options. So we have the proprietary spatial workstation eight channel format, which is Facebook's own channel format, not really that well used. We also have first order and second order for both AmbiX and Fuma, but you'll notice that third order is kind of just there for AmbiX. So and this is why I kind of keep saying, stick to AmbiX from start to finish, keep things consistent. Most things are using AmbiX these days. So we're gonna select B format, third order AmbiX, and that's ready to go. Then we need to select our audio file. Now it says I've already got one selected, but I'm going to just get rid of those for now so I can show you the whole process. All we need to do is click load, navigate to where our audio file is saved. So I've got that saved in FB360 tutorial, I believe, exports. And then yeah, there they are. So I'm going to select tutorial ambi.wav, click open. And then we have our headlock stereo option. So that's exactly the same thing. We don't need to change any formats, obviously, because it's just stereo, but we do need to load up the file. So I'm going to click load FB360 tutorial HL. Now, this section here, the video section, is where this whole workflow gets a little bit more frustrating because you're having to use different formats for different stages of the production process. So earlier I said in previous videos that when you're working with the Spatializer plugin, you need to make sure that your video is in a format called DNxHR brackets LB, and we want it to be low resolution so that our software can handle it. Now that we're coming over to the encoder settings, we need to make sure that it's the original high resolution version of our video. So whatever we're exporting from our editing software, the full resolution version of that. And it also needs to be an MP4 format. So DNxHR is a .mov format based around Avid's proprietary video format. MP4, what we're looking for for here is a H.264 or H.265 format, which is the most common format you'll find on the internet. It's a compressed format, so it's similar to MP3 in that sense. Uh, so it's slightly lower quality, uh, but far more efficient for online distribution. So I'm going to click load here, and I'm, I know that sequence one, badly named sequence one, underscore one here is the uh, is the file that I want to use. I can see that it's MP4. So I'm just going to select that and click open. I'm going to leave the video layout as monoscopic. You should too. I'm not going to go into any detail really about what that is, but that's just basically saying I've got the equi rectangular and I'm ready for that to be my 360 video. You've got focus down here. Now focus basically tells it to focus the audio on where the listener is looking. It's kind of interesting to experiment with a little bit. You can adjust like how wide that focus is and all of that, but it will affect the sound of your final mix and make it different to what you have decided to do in Reaper. So, you know, have a bit of a play around with it. Maybe put that setting in in your session. You can do it with the control plugin, I think. Um, but it's there at this part if that's something that you want to do. So now I've got that in. I've got my spatial audio set up properly. I've got my headlocked audio set up properly, my video set up properly. I'm exporting for Facebook 360, so I'm ready to go. All I need to do now is click encode and give it a name. So FB360 tut and navigate to where I want it to be saved. So I'm going to keep it there. Okay, cool. Click save. It'll start compressing the audio and go through the whole exporting process. So that's how to use the Facebook 360 Spatial Workstation with Reaper. They're really powerful plugins. They're all free. We're using it within a incredibly powerful digital audio workstation, which is also free or dirt cheap. So it's a really interesting time to be experimenting with all of this stuff. Have a bit of a play around with all of that. If you do have any questions, do feel free to give me a shout. I will answer them as best that I can. But yeah, thank you for sticking around to the end. Uh, and I hope to see you very soon. Have a good one and stay safe. Bye.